Give thanks to God for today. Happy to come before the Creator and to receive of His love. Happy to learn in the presence of His angels. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus name we pray thank you so much Heavenly Father we are full of your love we appreciate what you do for us we enjoy divine our fellowship with you. We say it is a good thing to come before you every week to seek your face. Thank you for giving us every Sunday evening 4.30 p.m. Nigerian time. Yes, to seek your face, to receive from you as obedient children. Thank you, Father. Give us a portion of today. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. Thank you for coming. The Bible says we should be doers of the word of God, not hearers only. Be excited, be zealously affected. Today, in our Bible study, we're considering biblical principles of obedience. Before we go to areas of obedience, I feel it's necessary to know the principles of obedience. What helps obedience? What forms the foundation of obedience? What should you have what should you be adorned with to be able to obey freely? What character promotes obedience? Biblical principles of obedience. We have learned that the paramount thing God requires of us, his creatures, is obedience to him and to his word. The inanimate creatures, inanimate, not animals, the creation of God, the creatures of God that don't speak, don't breathe, they are non-living things. Yet, they obey his word. Because what God wants is obedience. They obey his word. 
They are non-living, as we term them, as the wind, as the land, as the mountain, the sea, the waters, the stars, the planets. They all obey the order God has set them. They obey the word of the creator. So because everything the Bible says God created for himself and are subject to him. Look at it in the book of Mark chapter 4. Mark Chapter 4, verse 39 to 41. Mark chapter 4, verse 39 to 41. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. The wind is non-living. The sea is non-living. But they obeyed the voice of the creator. There was a mighty wind ro rolling the sea to the fear of the, the, the disciples who thought they would perish. When they cried to him, he rose up and rebuked the wind. He said, wind, Stop that. See, level down. Wonderful. The captain of creation. And it was so. And in verse 41, and they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? All creation obeys him. He's the creator. Man of man is more than man. It's God in man's body that visited the earth. It's God in man's body. And he created all things and made them subject to himself and obey him. Hi, this is wonderful. This is great. The sea does not transgress the decree of his world and cannot pass its boundary. He had given a decree that the sea should not cross its own boundary. And there are places you may go. As you are getting near the sea, it is as if the sea is in the sky. You say, if this rolls down, it will cover the little land. But the Lord has spoken to it. Don't cross your boundary. Even as it roars, coming with a great rage, as if it will empty itself upon the land and clear up everyone there. When it comes to the boundary, or up, when it's getting towards the boundary, it breaks. The creator said, I should not pass my boundary. That's God's creation. There is a covenant of obedience between God and his creation. Yes. Set the, the angelic beings 
in heaven have been set on automatic obedience. They carry out the, the word of God perfectly. As if they are electrically arranged. They carry out his word. That's the obedience going on in heaven by the angels. He's the owner. He's the creator of all things. And all things are subject to him. Again, Satan and the fallen angels the demons obey his authority in Mark chapter 1 verse 21 to verse 28 of Mark chapter 1 the Bible says from verse 21 and they went into Capernaum and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. The owner has come. The creator has come. Whom should he fear? The final authority indeed. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of God. I know thee, the devil says so. You show him as a man. Satan saw him as one that came from God. Being God himself. He's aware of it. He didn't miss words. His presence alone was consuming evil. His presence alone was affecting the devil. Piercing into him. And he cried out. I know you. Have you come to destroy us now? Because we know we will be destroyed one day. Satan knows he, there is an end to him. And that this end is coming from the creator God. He's aware of this. Yes. And he's talking about Jesus. Whom some people commonize. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had turned him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. Satan and his kingdom must obey him. He allowed that. That's why Satan is making noise. Is it? He allowed it. Is owner of the market. Although many various things are sold there, many things are sold in the market, he allowed it. He allowed it for wisdom because of his plan, because of his ability to forbear. And they were all amassed in so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, what thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even unclean spirits and they do obey him. And they do obey him. Unclean spirits. That's why he said in my name you, can, you will cast out devils. You use my name, they will obey you. I'm talking about the final authority. 
He created them. These are the most stubborn beings presently in God's creation. But subject to him. Obey him. Ah. The issue of human obedience to God is put on voluntary action because of the probationary world we are in. This is so done to determine who goes to heaven and who goes to hellfire, depending on their choice to obey God or not. As for these other inanimate things, that's their permanent state. They have no option to obey God. The wind, the sea, the sky, the stars, the moon, the sun, and the planets, all. The, anything God says is automatic obedience. As for angels in heaven, that's the state. They obey him. They are set on obedience. There's no disobedient angel in heaven now. But the matter is with man. Because man is in a school to determine his state, his eternal state. Man is in a, in a school on earth. And so, in the school, God has given every student his free will to choose how to live his life before he set, he put, he, before his, the final state will come. Whether they will join the angels or they will be going to hell and be there, the place of the disobedient. So the choice is yours to make. The decision is yours to take. Will you be on the side of obedience? Because there's no creature of God that does not obey him. We have shown it even up to the, up to the devils. No creature of God does not obey him. But when you see rebellion among men, it's just men only. You see stubbornness. You see people retorting to God. You see people angry with him. You see people looking as if, tell me where God is, I'm going to fight him. Allow that. That is the nature of the school. Choose where you will be, how you will live. But after you finish on earth, you are going to a permanent state where you will be subject to the obedience of God. You will obey the rules of hell. Because when you go to hellfire, you discover that it is a creation of God. It is a creature of God created upon the rules of obedience. And hell will deal with you as God has instructed it. And it will... That is how you yourself will follow the rules of hell. There's no disobedience in hell. Or else you come to heaven. Then join the angels on perfect obedience. There shall be no fall anymore. There shall be no sin anymore in heaven. But now it's in your hand to determine. Choose how you will live. In Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 30. Verse 15. Yes. To verse 20. Deuteronomy. Chapter 30. Verse 15 to 20. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. See, I have said before thee this day, life and good and death and evil, 
This is never set before the angels in heaven. Permanently they are on the site of life. Permanently they are on the site of good. It is never set before Satan. Permanently is in the sight of evil. Permanently is in the sight of dead. It is never set before animals. They don't have eternal soul to live. It is never set before non-living creatures in animate creation why they don't have life the only people that house heaven and earth set before them are human creatures because they are in the probationary world where life is not permanent the permanence is after they leave the world that's why this is said to determine eventually where they will be in the permanence of existence. Even there, I told you, in hell or heaven, they will be put under the law to obey the mind of God. That which God set there. Judgment in hell eternal life in heaven. So I've said this before the Yes. But if thine heart turn away so that thou wilt not hear but shalt be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whether thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death that does not that therefore shows God does not choose people that are hellish like this young man that the Lord granted us grace to go and bring the gospel to him and saved him and brought him to nourish him in the world. He backslid and went back into evil and was telling people that God didn't mean for him to go to heaven. God meant that he should perish. So what will he do? He will just have to go into sin. Who told you? Then why did he send us to you? Why did you respond at first? Is God a mocker? So, it's a solemn matter. It's not in my hand. It's before, I call heaven and earth to be a witness that I've never created you to destroy you. Never. Even Satan and his demons, did I create them to destroy them? It's what happened afterwards. Is because of their disobedience. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. The choice is in your hand. Choose life. The, et- the counsel of God to you. The advice. If God tells you to make choice, Will he not help you to make a good choice? Since he is also the God of power. Will he not subdue evil around you? Since it is his will for you to choose good. Make a choice and see. The power of God, the grace of God will be enough to keep you in the good choice you have made. So, That is what we have said. According to the word of God. Obedience to God and by his instruction is not easy to the natural man. Except 
he fulfills biblical principles required for obedience. It's not easy. Like the man, who, the young man who, who left the grace of God and said, ah, maybe God, I am not able to do that. It's not able actually. It's not able actually. Why? It's not easy. Except you follow biblical principles required for obedience. You follow the path required. Required for obedience. Which includes, number one, the crucifixion of self. Removal of carnality. Yes. Yes. Born again. Righteousness with God. In the book of Romans, chapter 8, Romans chapter 8. I read from verse 1 to verse 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, and after, but after the Spirit. This tells you the principle of obedience shows that one has to be in Christ Jesus. One has not to walk in the flesh, but in the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. The principle of the spirit of life is in Christ Jesus. We set you free from sin, the principles of sin that is in your body, leading you to death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, Condemned sin in the flesh. It's only in Christ the resisting force against God inside you can be broken, condemned. It's only in Christ that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. It is in Christ that the spirit of life will give you life and make you not to walk after the flesh. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. You are living in the flesh that's talking about your body, this body, has many desires. If you follow the desires of this body, some of you would have been sleeping, sleeping now. You wouldn't have come here. Some of you would have gone to say, I want to go and watch game. Some of you would have been in some other places. Some will be committing immorality somewhere. Some will be taking alcohol in a party somewhere. Some will be doing many other things somewhere. They will, you won't be here. If you follow the dictate of the flesh, the, the things we're even saying here will have no interest in your life because you will not do it. A sister said she watched Sister Linda's testimony of hellfire. She watched it and burst into cry. She was crying profusely. 
weeping. She said, some people who saw her crying might be thinking she was repenting because of hearing about hellfire. No, she was just saying, oh, I'm not going to do what you are saying. So I'll go to hell. Oh. And so she was weeping because I will not do what you have said. What you are saying now, I'm not going to do it. So I will end in hell. The fl- Why is she not going to do it? She still has the flesh, more immorality to, co- to commit, maybe. Boyfriend. She says, boyfriend. She has maybe more things to steal because it takes pleasure in stealing. She has more things to decorate herself with. Artificial beauty, which this message is saying I should not do and I will not, I won't obey it. So this is going to be my end. The flesh has a dictate. So they that are in the flesh, they that love the, to have the flesh satisfied. The Bible says, they cannot serve God. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit, yeah, the mind, the things of the spirit, They are the one to have peace. For to be carnally minded is dead. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. This thinking of f- flesh, satisfy your flesh, honor your flesh, magnify your flesh. I want to be, I want to be, I want to be you will not be able to obey to go into the spirit of obedience, the life of obedience. Because it will be against your wishes. It's against your wishes. Yes. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. When someone is conscious of his greatness, and glory he will find obedience according to scriptures difficult very difficult because he is greater than the people that he is to obey he is better than the people that he is to obey how can great man like this like him obey a child Obey the policeman on the road. For what? For what? He will see obedience as an act of humiliation. A display of inferiority. A matter of shame and disgrace. Yes. To come and fall into line. To come and obey what they're saying there. No. I can't disgrace myself. Who is he? Who are they? Who is she? It's even a common woman that is asking me. Who are you? You know me? So, you see, it's in the flesh. If you are in the flesh, you can't obey. You feel high. People should obey you. People should respect you, whoever they are. Those who smoke these uh, drugs, I mean, who take these drugs that make them feel high, they don't regard any person. That's what the drugs does to them. They don't regard any person. They are superior to all. And so, why must they obey? Yes. Except it is something that apparently will give them personal benefits. 
they will resist any law that demands their obedience. They will resist it. So, to be able to obey, you must be in Christ. Crucify the self. You must be born again to have a new nature. The nature of Christ. Look at it in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You see, be in Christ is then the, the power of resistance and stubbornness will be removed from you. You will now be like Christ. You will be a new person that can be directed. You will be a new person that can obey because your nature is fashioned to the nature of obedience. You must be born again. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 to verse 8, Colossians chapter 2, verse 6, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. It is as you receive Jesus as your Lord, and submit yourself to him, the creator God, that you will be able to walk in his obedience. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as he have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. It is then you will obey the word of God. You will be rooted in the word of God. And what is it? Obedience. Relationship with God is the relationship of obedience. Obedience. It's in Christ. Then you will be rooted. You, you will be submissive to the word of God, to authority in the church, to leadership, to your wife, to your husband, to constituted authority, to the government, government laws and rules, regulations, because the fashion of God, the world is put in a state of obedience. It's only in man that the Lord give him, gives him choice. If you submit to Christ to be recreated, the recreation in you is towards obedience to put into you the body of obedience, the mind of obedience. Yes, that is it. Otherwise, the philosophies of the world is against total submission. It will not allow your body, no. He says in verse 8, Beware, Lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Because the world doesn't know this absolute, clean, selfless obedience. They don't, they don't know it. Except it ministers to their honor. Natural man is looking for self-promotion. Achievements, glory, greatness above others. He wants to rule. He wants to be in control. He cannot submit to the law of God, the law of righteousness. It is as you are obedient that this life of Christ, nature of Christ, yes, 
will be seen in your life. Number two, determination for holiness and heaven. I'm talking about the principles, the foundation upon which obedience can be developed. Full obedience. Full obedience. Determination for holiness and heaven. In John, 1 John chapter 2, chapter 3 rather, verse 2 to 6, 1 John chapter 3, verse 2 to 6, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purified himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in, in him is no sin. Whosoever abided in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Here, because you want to go to heaven, you have to propel yourself towards holiness, drive yourself to holiness. And because you must be holy for heaven, you submit in all matters of obedience. It is in this respect a woman will submit in obedience to the husband. It is in this respect a man in the church will submit in obedience to church authority. The church leadership Otherwise, who are they? Who are they to talk to him? He's a member of the church, but he can go any time he wants. He does not have heaven before him. He does not have holiness before him. And so, cannot submit. He is not looking for heaven. He's not looking for heaven. So, why striving for holiness? Then, we're striving for obedience. But, for heaven, if that is in your heart, you will drive yourself to holiness. And to maintain holiness, you must obey all the word of God. All the instructions of God. This is the foundation. Your vision, your heavenly vision is the cause of obedience. Yes. Your heavenly vision is the cause of obedience. In Acts of Apostles, chapter 5, verse 27 to 29, Acts of Apostle, chapter 5, verse 27 to 29. The scripture says the following. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We 
ought to obey God rather than man is because of heaven. If we disobey, we have lost our holiness and have lost heaven. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Holiness means obedience. Holiness means obedience. And this obedience is to God. Obedience to man is instructed by God. But it must be first to God. And all other form of obedience must be as allowed and instructed by God. Which is paramountly in righteousness and holiness. If God says we should go and preach. And we are doing as God said we should do. And you are asking us. Why should we preach? Listen, for our holiness, we must obey God above men. For our holiness, we must obey so that we can please God and go to heaven. In this way, therefore, ma, you don't have a commanding presence before me. To make me disobey the word of God. You cannot shut my mouth. No, you cannot. I must obey God. Because God instructed me to do it. Yes. Holiness. Hence, obey God. Above your husband. Obey God. Above your pastor. Obey God. Above your leader. When King Saul ordered that the priests of God should be killed. He ordered those people around him. Nobody did it. Because in the judgment, what have they done? You want us to follow your evil passions and share with you the judgment of God? Never. So you will not say, my person forced me and my father said I should wear this. My husband says I should wear trousers. I should wear. What are you talking about? Your husband and God, who is more? Your husband is giving you a bad rule. Are you going to follow that? It's because of your disobedience to God. But you can disobey him for, because God says you should not put on those property of evil. The jewelry. My husband said I must not go to church. And so you're not going to church? My father said, I should not serve God. So you're not serving God? That's disobedience to God. But this one said, we will obey God rather than man. Everybody say it. Perfect. Whether the man is yourself. Therefore, humble you man. When your ways are contrary to the ways of God, don't enforce it upon anybody. Why do you want to destroy them? Why do you want to remove them from heaven? Your ways are contrary. Husband, why are you enforcing your ways that are unrighteous upon your wife? Is it Christian to demand that from a wife? Does it even show your loyalty to the creator God for you to demand that from your wife? So allow her to disobey you because you have left the path of God. You are backslidden. You can't do those things. I want to lick your anus. 
I want to lick your this. And he, she knows it's unclean business. And she said, no. She's on the righteous side. Because God told her not to submit to uncleanness. That is the word of God. Obey him now. Else you will obey him in hell. Hell obeys God. So, that's the word of God. Ob servants, obey God above your master. That is the word. Children, obey God above your parents. Your parents may be ungodly. And they want you to go ungodly with them. Reject it. God does not permit you to go ungodly with your parents. Ungodliness is sin and evil. And is damnable in hell. Again, number three. Genuine love and respect for others. Genuine love. You know, if you truly love a person sincerely, you will not want to disobey him. If you truly respect the person, you will not want to disobey him. In the book of Philippians, chapter 2, I read from verse 1. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and messes, this is telling us that in Christ there is love, there is comfort, there is fellowship. In the spirit, there is mercy for one another. In Christ, you possess this. Fulfill ye my joy in the fellowship among brethren. As you live in the community, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded in the church as believers. Having the same love, being of one accord, the same agreement, think the same way of one mind, the same, agree, cooperate, love. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. Don't struggle to have more. Above your brother, above your sister. Don't struggle to be the one to command respect. No, those things are of the flesh. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory for your pride. But in loneliness of mind, let each esteem other. Better than themselves. Honor the other. Give honor. To, don't see yourself supreme. You are a human being as they are. As they honor you, give out honor too. As a leader, they honor you because of any property in you, any position you possess, make sure you give it back to them too. In fact, see them as better than yourself. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Have interest in one another. Desire the progress of your brethren, the wellness of your brethren. Desire that your sister should marry. Desire that your brother should have job. Desire good things for others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. 
This honoring people, respecting people, you are in the church, you have respect for the minister, respect for the elders, respect for those in authority. In your working place, you respect them. Obedience will be cheap for you. Obeying them will be easy. You love your, your husband. You respect your husband. Then obeying him will be easy. This is the foundation of obedience. Respect. Love. Is the foundation of obedience. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, taught it not robbery, to be equal with God. It's not evil for him to declare, to, as he came in his own, he came as a man. It's not evil to be declaring everywhere. I'm God, I'm God, I'm God. Although he could say it here and there because it is truth, but Jesus did not take that as a show when he came to the earth, as a pride when he came to the earth. No. But made himself of no reputation. That's why I say, take the form, take the humble life. Be selfless. Because that is the only thing that will make obedience possible. If you feel great, how do you obey people who are lower than you when you feel I'm greater than these people? But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient. Humility before obedience. Calm down. Is then you will have to lift other people up. Calm down. Is then you can hear and obey. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. If you don't have humility, always exalting yourself, always thinking, I am. It, obedience, this real obedience we're talking about will not work. Even if you desire it, it will not work because the carnal mind is standing up. Natural man has an iron inside him that doesn't want to bend. If that iron must bend, you take it to fire. Burn it in fire and let them heat it. Begin to heat it. Is then it can bend. That's why God, come to God. He will change you. Give you a new nature that can humble you, is then obedience is possible. Otherwise, how will you obey? How will you even obey God? See the way Cain responded to God. God talking and he was talking back. No recognition that this is the supreme God, the creator, talking to him. He didn't bother. Why? That is the state of the natural man. You have to be born again. You have to humble before you can obey. Humble. Yes. That's what God is saying to you. Let this mind be in you even as it was in Christ Jesus. What made, what, see what Jesus said about love and obedience. In the book of John, chapter 14, verse 15. 
He said, If ye love me, keep my commandments. If you really love, accept, respect, you will obey. Verse 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. A wife can be saying to the husband, I love you, I love you, darling, darling, darling. Do you keep his words? Because the two go together. If you say you love me, it is demonstrated practically by keeping my word. By obeying my word. By carrying out my instruction. This is where love is seen. He that hath my commandment means, and keepeth them, he, he, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him. And will manifest myself to him. The reward of law, of obedience, is that I will love you. You will receive love from your husband as much as you obey him. Carry out his, his, his instruction. It's then love will flow more from him to you. He loves me by keeping my commandment and I also will love him. Because he's keeping my commandment. My father also will love him because he's an obedient child. Judah said unto him, not his carry of love. Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. He will keep my words. How are you not keeping his words and say you love Jesus? You go to immorality. You go to drunkenness. You go to this. You go to this and say you love Jesus. No, you are not loving him. If a man loves me, he will keep my words. He will obey me. And my father will love him because he's an obedient person. Because he's an obedient person. And we will come unto him and make our board with him. I told you the paramount thing God wants is obedience. See now, he has given God obedience and the God in his trinity have come to stay with him. Because that is what thrills him, obedient heart. Carrying out instruction as you have been told. Yes. Verse 24 says, He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. So, not on mouth only. But on practical life of submitting, of obeying. If you really love, you will obey. That is what we're saying. If the love is pure, your obedience will be pure. But if the love is impure kind of love, it's not clean love, you'll be given unclean obedience. Because you say you love a man. You're giving your body to the man. That is unclean love. I mean, the man who is not your husband. That's unclean love. And you're giving, and the man is demanding of your body and you're, you're submitting. That's uncleanness. Unclean obedience. But I'm talking about pure love. Again, number four, prayer. Prayer. A soft and obedient heart is the promise of God to his children. And this can be received through prayer. A soft and obedient, obedient heart. God promises you this. It's God that will work it out. Increasingly in your life, plead with him. Pray to him. If there's any area that looks difficult, Ask him. If there's any demand 
that is strong, ask him. Tell him to help you. Let him give you grace to do it. If your heart is giving you difficulty to submit, ask God. Let him handle that heart. Let him cleanse you more, sanctify you. Let him fill your heart with love. Let him give your heart love. You need to pray. Sister, you find it difficult to obey your husband. It's because you find it difficult to love your husband. Then go for love. Take it before you as prayer. Because if you hate him, you're a murderer. And no mother has any place in the kingdom of God. No mother has eternal life abiding in him. In Ezekiel 36, Ezekiel chapter 36, I read verse 25. Yes. Verse 25 to 27. The scripture says, Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Salvation has come into your life. To wipe away sin. But the Lord will also want to deal with your heart. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. That the spirit that talks about a new nature. Will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. Stubborn heart. Resisting heart. Wicked heart, unkind heart, disobedient heart, I remove it. And I will give you an heart of flesh, soft heart, loving heart, pure heart, obedient heart. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And ye shall keep my judgments and do them. Obedience will become easy now. I'm going to work on you to make obedience to me easy. Obedience to the church, church authority, easy. Obedience to the government rules, easy. Obedience to your husband, easy. Obedience to your, ch- to your parents, easy. I will walk on you. But then you have to pray to me. Verse 37. Thus saith the Lord God. I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. Ask me. I will do it for you. I'm going to give you a heart of obedience. The devil is prompting you to pride. The devil is speaking the voice of pride into your heart. Take it to God. Tell him what the devil is doing. He will remove that devil from your life. So that you have a heart of obedience. He will remove that heart of pride from your life that makes obedience difficult. You come before your pastor, you feel that you're older than him. What what does this person know? You are more educated. I'm talking about righteous ministers of God who represent God. But your heart of pride makes you belittle them. When the scripture says you should reverence them, respect them, highly in love, But your heart cannot do it. It's 
stubborn. Ask God, I will take away that stubborn heart, that stony heart, out of your flesh. Ask me, why is there fighting all the time in the house? She refuses to obey me. She refuses to recognize me. She refuses to, sub to submit to me. Pray for her that God will remove that stony heart. Pray, ask God. You will find that obeying you will be easy. When she sees that she's lower than you, as a woman, she sees that she's lower than you by the provision of God, the placement of God, is then she will obey. As long as she does not see herself low, her, lower than you, no. Her heart feels, which way are you different from me? Ah, it's God that placed the man over the woman. So, if you recognize this truth, you will honor the man. Why am I speaking more on a man, I mean, woman, or obey man? It's, I'm following the scripture. People that will obey. I will be more clear maybe next week. People that it's your responsibility to obey. God has put, has put you in the place where your role is obedience. Yes. Yeah. That's the word of God. If you love me, you obey me. Ask me to help you. Again, in Psalm 119. Psalm 119. I'm talking about praying for obedience. Verse 17. Deal bountifully with thy servant that I may live and keep thy word. That's prayer. God, deal well with me. Let me live and obey your word. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. I am a stranger in the earth. Hide not thy commandments from me. My soul breaketh for the longing that it had toward thy judgments at all times. Thou hast rebuked the proud that are cursed, which do err from thy commandments. Why? They are proud and they are cursed because they don't obey your word. You see what pride can do to a man? Remove from me, re remove from me reproach and contempt, for I have kept thy testimonies. Princes also sit and speak against me, but thy servant did meditate in thy statutes. Thy testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. My soul cleaveth unto the dust, quicken down me according to thy word. So, I have declared my ways, and thou hardest me. Teach me thy statutes. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wondrous works. My soul melted for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according to thy word. Remove from me the way of lying and grant me thy law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. My judge, thy judgments have I laid before me. I have stood unto thy testimonies. O Lord, put me not to shame. I will run the way of thy commandments. When thou shalt enlarge my heart. Ask for God to help you to, with all that you need to be an obedient person. God, open my eyes. God, grant me understanding. I want, I want to obey everything. I don't want confusion in my life. So, genuine love and respect for others. Prayer. To give you a heart of love. Number five, faith. Faith. What is faith? Faith 
is walking according to the word of God. Although your understanding may not be clear. Your understanding may not be clear. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. You can't perceive everything. Don't think you will understand everything. You are not able. Even Jesus, when he was speaking to his disciples, said, the things, the things that I am saying, you have not understood them, but you will understand them later. You will grow into understanding. So don't sit down and say, no, I can't do it because I do not understand. What are you saying? Is it from God? Is it the word of God? Is it the word of scripture? Why are you bringing understanding to it? It is through faith that we come to understand. You start with faith. Understanding follows. Look at it in Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. I read verse 3. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen we're not made of things which do appear. We first take it so. Understanding comes later. We say, okay. Don't wait for understanding before you obey. In Genesis chapter 22, verse 1, the Bible tells us here, Genesis 22, verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass. Did he understand? Why are you all given excuse of obedience? Because I know I don't understand. Must you understand? The question is, is it the voice of God? Is it clear as you know this is God? Then why are you asking for understanding? Understanding will follow later. How would Abraham have understood that God was going to give us a pattern of what he would do to Jesus? He, being the father, would give up Jesus for sacrifice to save the world. Can, could Abraham have understood at that time? Why are you waiting for understanding? Go by faith and obey. It's the word of God. They say, remove earrings from you. Don't rub, your, don't rub powders. Don't do, he said, I don't understand. Why are you waiting for understanding? Go by faith. If you wait for understanding, you are in the state of disobedience. The thing is, is it the word of God? Has it been written? You say, how is this thing affecting my righteousness? How you remove the air and say, how everybody just look at it. You want to bring things of God to understanding? Don't. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews. Chapter 11, verse 8. Verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. He obeyed. He did not even know where he was going. This is faith. This is the life with God. A life of obedience. 
Yours is be sure God tells you, not a demon spirit. Many of you are walking under a demon spirit, speaking a voice, and you're following the voice of the demon spirit. You can, oh, go down to the roadside. You go down to the road. Sit on the ground. You sit on the ground there. People are looking, what has happened to you? The Lord said I should sit on the ground. It's the Lord demon. You're following a demon. You are a woman. Satan came to you and he's speaking like God. And you will not marry. You hear, oh, my daughter, I'm going to make you, make your name great in the world like Abraham, so you will not marry. You believe. Anybody coming for marriage, no, God says I will not marry. Is the God demon. Verify those voices you're hearing that you're submitting to. Voluntary, voluntary submission. Check up those voices. Many of you, is the voices of the devil, is the voice of the devil that is calling you to, into, into ministry. Not God. So no, don't do any work. When Paul, the apostle, was walking with his hands, he said, see, these my hands have fed me in ministry. But your own, your God said you should not do anything. And you say it's the living God. You should just be going about begging. Brother, can I have? <laughs> Sister, can you make some food for me? How long will you be going about that when you have ability to walk? God says you should not walk. You should just put collar on your knee and be going about ministering the gospel. Check those things by scriptures. So, but I'm talking about where the voice of God is speaking to you in reality. Obey by faith. Abraham knew God was talking to him. Clear. If you're not clear, why not take counsel? By faith, he went. Not even knowing where he was going. Go by faith. They just shall live. I said they just shall live. I said they just shall live. And without faith. So you sit down there in disobedience. Stand up and do it by faith. Stand up and do it by faith. Now, the number six readiness readiness to suffer be ready if you want to obey you must be ready to suffer it's not all sweet things even Jesus came to this world the creator and demonstrated that man on earth should not be looking for sweet 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 there's bitterness also the time life is hard and you need to be tested. You need to stand. You need to yield your body to suffering because you want to obey. What is the word? Thou shalt serve the Lord your God, and him only shalt thou worship. Don't serve any other gods beside me. Righteous people, this is the commandment, this is the word. Keep it at all costs. Keep it at all costs. Woman, keep your purity at all costs. Never any man should defile your body. Man, keep your righteousness at all costs. Never your hand give bribe. Keep it at all costs. Obedience at all costs. In the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verse 14 to 18. Daniel, chapter 3, verse 14 to verse 18. The Bible tells us, saying, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up now? If ye be ready, that at what time 
Ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbat, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music. Ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace and who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands some of you your husbands make themselves greater than God I said who is that God <laughs> I pray that the Lord will give them the type of wife like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego answered and said to the king Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, I think they didn't call him king again. <laughs> Check it there. Is that king there? Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. You want to force me to disobey my God? Your respect is gone. Your honor is gone. Your title disappears. Yes, if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And, we will, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, <laughs> O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up, we will not do it. Because of our God is a commandment from God. Come, my brethren, a heart sold to truth, righteousness and holiness, obeys God unto death. Keeps righteousness and holiness unto death. Holy believers, do not mind divorce, beating, Deprivation, job termination, break of friendship, banishment from family union, academic failure, and death on account of obedience to God and his scriptural truths. Nobody. Who, what shall separate us from the love of God? What? That's what Paul asked in Romans chapter 8. Why? Can somebody give an exchange of the love of, of obedience to God in the life of a true believer? Money? Let your money perish with you. She is giving her body. Run away from that body. It is nothing. It's despised. Then what again? Anything in this life? Stay without it. Friendship? Reject it. Family members don't want you again because of Jesus. Accept it. Your job is saying, leave. Your God will do you good above that thing you're losing. Think ye that I've come for peace in this earth. I've come for war. I've come with a sword. Because if you will obey me, you can stand in battle, to fight through, to ensure nobody will defy your life. Nobody. So don't come and say, my husband is so new. This my don't talk like that again. God is greater than your husband. Jesus is superior to him. Jesus is your, the anger of your husband. Has he, has he set up a fire somewhere? Like Nebuchadnezzar? That if you don't obey, he will cast you there. And with servants ready. Can that fire be, be set at degrees? And yet, the people that know righteousness did not obey Nebuchadnezzar. Even to death. And you are busy saying, my, uh, it's my boss. That is, uh, I say you should keep quiet on those things. A, a person that knows God. He, they, what did the disciples tell the Sanhedrin? Judge it in yourself. Should we obey man rather than God? God. God. That any man. So please, sell yourself to God and to truth, to righteousness, to holiness. And that's the foundation of obedience. 
May God give you grace. I said, may God give you grace. If you have anything that is obscure, seek for counsel. That's number seven. Counseling. Without counsel, purposes are disappointed. But in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. Seek counsel. Get it. Be advised so that you don't do it foolishly. Be advised so that your ways are right with your God. May the spirit of obedience be poured upon all of us so that we will fulfill the purpose of creation to obey God and obey his words. Let's rise up upon our feet and thank him. Thank you, Father. You created us to obey you. And among men, you make, make it optional by giving man choice. May your children choose that which is right. May your children choose that which is good. All creation of God obeys him. All, including Satan and his demons. But it's man that is stubborn to God. When the Lord comes and speaks, Satan submits. He cannot answer back. It's man. And God is patient with man because you are in a school where I will know who will pass exam to be with me in a place of absolute obedience as the angels. And who will fail to go to hell you will obey the laws of hell, hellfire, <laughs> because the creation of God obeys him. Thank you.